Today we will be understanding regional differen aerial differentiation and regional synthesis. In the previous session we have already talked about system analysis and the modern perspectives in human geography. Today we would be understanding about one of the basic perspectives that was uh, most, most common during the phase of late 19th century to early 20th century and that's what is regional, uh, the concept of region per se. So when I say the concept of region, I try to understand the concept of regional geography. Within the regional geography, we would be trying to understand aerial differentiation and regional synthesis. Now, region was defined <coughs> as an area with homogeneous boundary and this region later on was called as regional science. by Izard in around 1951 and he tried to explain the various uh, quantitative approaches in the field of regional geography. He tried to apply the concept of factor analysis, principal component analysis, crustal, cluster analysis and so on. Now this region was defined into various ways, the, first, the one of which was aerial differentiation. Aerial differentiation was propounded by Hudson, Richard Hudson in his book Nature of Geography and the main objective of aerial differentiation as the word denotes is it was it was the main objective was to differentiate various areas so different areas and Finding out the differences in the different areas was the main aim of aerial differentiation. Now, as I said, there, there is a supposedly a region A and you have another region that's region B. Now this region and this region, we have to find out what are the similarities between the region. And what are the dissimilarities or I can say the differences between the region. So what Hudson did was to find out the differences that made this area unique from this area or this region unique in contrast to this region. So this was what was the basis of the theory of aerial differentiation. So the main aim as I said was to describe and interpret the differences in the different areas and finally the interaction of the various physical and human characteristics within the region and across the region. So that was the main aim. Now most of the people say the first one to propound the concept of aerial differentiation was Richard Hudson. But the concept of aerial differentiation has been a kind of historical concept which started with the KTS of Miletus. Now he tried to explain the differences in the various areas. Then there was the Strabo who tried to describe the various parts of earth. Then came Hudson. Now as per the basic definition that Hudson gave, we can say he explained that each area is unique and that is revealed by the covariation that exists not only between the region but that also helps to identify each region and how that region can be understood with respect to other region. Later on, Engio, in a, that was a very recent study in around 1989 explained this in a very simple way and he said it's the degree of either sameness or the differences that exist within the region. Now Hudson when he was trying to differentiate or trying to explain the concept of aerial differentiation he said there are three primary reasons because of which we can say different areas are different. The first and the foremost reason is there is interrelationship of different phenomena that exist either directly or indirectly. So there are various phenomena that exist which are interrelated either directly or indirectly. 
Then the next is there are differential characteristics of the various phenomena and the complexes that exist on the earth surface and finally he tried to propound the aerial expression of the phenomena which he tried to explain in terms of chorology that was propounded by Fenman and he tried to say this is a kind of the highest order that we could get in the field of regional geography. So if I could express an area based on the differences that I have marked that is the best thing that I can do in the field of regional differentiation. Now when he was trying to uh, highlight the importance of differences among the region at the same time there was Haggett who was trying to emphasize on the concept of aerial integration. So under the concept of aerial integration what he was trying to say was the basis to integrate the regions rather than differentiate the regions. So Haggett was one of the main critic of aerial differentiation theory and he said it's important to have an aerial integration rather than uh, providing a differentiation for the area. So some of the major critics as I said was firstly it failed to develop with time because with time there were many new approaches that came up like the humanistic approach, radical approach, welfare approach, the approaches that were much more closer to human beings and the dynamic nature of human being. So this failed to develop with time as this was supposed to be more of descriptive in nature. It had an inbuilt concept of determinism which could not survive long because as with Blasch theory there was evolution of possibilism. Uh, the concept of region and regionalization, regional synthesis got a lower edge. There were no finer elements that it could demarcate. Another important thing was it tried to focus on the concept of regional totality. So rather than focusing on the individual elements, it tried to focus on the regional totality and that was one of the major limitation of aerial differentiation. And under regional differentiation, aerial differentiation, there was no means where you could elaborate the classification further or you could lay down the roots of aerial differentiation further. So these were the main criticism that were led forward for the aerial differentiation theory. As a result, there was a new theory that came in which was known as regional synthesis. Now regional synthesis theory had its origin from the concept of region and regional geography as I said. But the main proponent of regional synthesis theory was Berry who in 1964 gave an important aspect and that was time. He said if we are doing any study which is a spatial in nature, spatial means related to space. So when I say we are doing any study which is a spatial in nature, we cannot subdue or we cannot ignore the concept of time. So under his concept of regional synthesis, he tried to incorporate the concept of time. So as I said, it started with considering region as a study of regional science which was propounded by Izzard who gave the various theories, uh, who gave the application of uh, principal component analysis, factor analysis and so on in the field of regional geography. Then came Philbrick. Philbrick tried to demarcate regions based on functional characteristics. So he gave functional classification of regions. Then there was Ullmann who tried to provide the concept of dichotomy and dualism which we would be discussing in the further session. And then there was the concept where you try to explain uh, the regional synthesis as a subject of science and this was laid forward by James Conant. So these were some of the major developments which led to the origin of the concept of regional synthesis. Now before we start with regional synthesis, let's first understand spatial analysis. 
Once we are clear with the spatial analysis, then only we can introduce time in the concept of space and we can talk about spatio-temporal analysis. So under spatial analysis, so this was a kind of diagram that we can help or we can give to explain the concept of spatial analysis. So here I have certain characteristics. I have various places. So I have these as columns. So this is place 1, place 2, place 3 and place 4. So these are the various places and the vertical ones we call them as column and the horizontal ones are the rows. So these are the characteristics. So you have characteristic 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. Now what we are trying to understand here is first of all the horizontal elements were the rows. The vertical elements are the columns. So under spatial analysis, what he tried to explain, what Berry tried to explain was these columns differ from one another. The only reason being they are different places. Since there is different, they are different places, there is if I want to compare place A with place B, I could call it an case of aerial differentiation because they are different areas and I am trying to compare these two different areas. So that is an example of aerial variation. The next is within the same place, okay, I am trying to understand the various characteristics. So if I am trying to compare these two characteristics of one place, say this place only, I am trying to compare the two rows, I could call it as spatial covariation. So what Barry tried to explain was across rows there is spatial covariation but across columns you have aerial differentiation. The only reason for aerial differentiation is across columns you have different places since the places are different you will see the differences in the region and we can say this as aerial differentiation but across rows he tried to explain the differences in the characteristics of a single place and that could be explained as spatial covariation. Based on this he talked about cell and cell was a single unit which has similar kind of geographical settings. So he tried to explain the relationship between the columns, the rows and within the columns and the rows based on this diagram where he tried to explain the concept of spatial analysis. But somehow he felt that spatial analysis or understanding region just based on one particular uh, place is not enough. We need to know how that region evolved over a given time. And when I say when we need to know how that region evolved over a given time, we need to understand the spatio-temporal aspect. So when I say the spatio-temporal aspect, I try to understand the same region over the different time periods. So if I take this region over the different time frames, I can say over time 1, this was the case. Over time 2, this was the case and over time 3, this was the case. So how that same patch of land evolved over various years? So a very simple example if I want to do, uh, if I want to provide you is, I can say I have a um, city say New Delhi, 50 years back or say 200 years back. New Delhi was just a city which was uh, uh, which was kind of developing independently. 50 years back I could say it developed into a NCR or a national capital region where the surrounding areas or the this was the main Delhi city and you had surrounding areas of Ghaziabad, Noida, Faridabad and so on that tried to uh, come closer to the main city and there were suburbs that try to develop out. Might be in the next 150 years I can say this expansion can grow further or there can be reduction of uh, the expansion 
but this is how places change over a time frame so when i say i want to study the spatial analysis of delhi i cannot just include the spatial analysis of today i need to study how the city evolved over the years and how the city grew or expanded over the years so there is there is where we need to apply the concept of spatio temporal analysis which was put forward by berry and this was classified as a, a concept of regional synthesis the next is for any regional synthesis or any regional analysis we need to know two basic terms one is regionalization and next is regional uh, regionalism so when i say regionalization i try to classify a region i have supposedly this region a and i want to classify this or divide this based on certain criteria so that is where i applied the concept of regionalization and a regionalization i try to provide similar characteristics say characteristics leading to um, quality of life basic education level literacy these are the parameters that are i have taken as social parameters then there are other physical or infrastructural parameters that i can take availability of electricity whether this region is a rural or an urban region the healthcare facilities and so on okay now based on these parameters i can classify this region okay this region 1 2 and 3 one is the region with highest electricity two and three are the regions which have poor electricity supply but on the same map i can do another classification where i can say despite this this region 1 is a region of highest literacy and two and three are the regions of low literacy so that is how i can regionalize an area based on the different characteristics or qualities that i have but the region that i demarcate is homogeneous or has similar characteristics in one fashion or the other so this region where i say have higher literacy would be a region which is homogeneous because this region has similar characteristics in contrast to the other two regions that i have marked similarly what is regionalism regionalism implies i am trying to study uh, the aerial grouping of any complex phenomena so when i am trying to group an area which has various complex phenomena that are going simultaneously in i call it as regionalism so that region will not just have a single characteristic it will be a set of multiple characteristics that would be included when i am trying to explain the regionalism of the area now be it regionalism or regionalization what is a primary requisite the primary requisite is i must have some attributes with me based on which i can divide a region now what can be those attributes those attributes can be of various forms so the first is the criteria that criteria mainly governs the aspect of cohesion or uh, homogeneous nature now this can be uh, homogeneous soil homogeneous climate homogeneous weather these are something that i am talking about in terms of uh, geomorphological aspect there can be other aspects as i said about social parameters the quality of life the availability of sanitation facilities you can have the healthcare and the infrastructure facilities so there can be various criteria based on which you can define a region so this is one of the primary attribute of a region the next is categories under categories i can define a region as either uniform or i can say the region is nodal when i say it's a nodal category that means what is primarily important is the internal structure of the region so any internal structure of the region would be a primary requirement for a nodal category while in case of uniform category it has a kind of formal distribution of the criteria that we have been talking about 
Now characteristic, characteristic deals with the criteria. So based on certain characteristics, I can provide a criteria based on which criteria I would define the region. For example, I am trying to provide a characteristics of uh, availability of fodder for the grassland, uh, for the pastures. So when I say availability of fodder, that's one of the characteristics. Based on this, what criteria I can define here? Whether this land is a grazing land or not, it's optimum as a, uh, it's best as a grazing land or not. And this criteria can then be used as one of the attributes to classify the region. Then you have the cores and the boundaries. So cores are the intense expressive areas or the areas which have uh, very similar characteristics and are towards the heart of the region. So if I have this region, this would be the core where would be the real characters where we will have the real characteristics of the region and then you will have the periphery. Periphery you will have an intermingling from the so you have the next core, next region with its core and periphery. And since you can see here, you have an intermingling of the characteristics that occurs towards the periphery. So there would be intermingling of characteristics towards the periphery. And boundaries are defined based on the uh, core and the periphery that you have. Then is compage. Compage is the unlimited homogeneous area that I can explain. So it talks about real relationships, but the only limitation of compage is it lacks defined limits. So I do not have a defined limit for which I can say my region ends here. That's commonly in case of I can say languages. I can say this language is spoken in this region, but I cannot draw a sharp boundary on a map and say that beyond this region, there would be no, no person who would be speaking this language. So that's a kind of compage. You will have relative homogeneous, uh, it would be relatively homogeneous in nature, but it's hard to define exact limits or exact boundaries where you can say this region uh, is now no more in existence. And fi finally, you have regional consciousness. Regional consciousness, as the name suggests, it's kind of uh, the behavioral aspect, the perception of a human being and that's kind of more dynamic concept and this was one of the reasons where uh, the ambit of regional geography slowly lost its faith and there were more focuses on the humanistic approaches that laid out. So now you have, since you have the attributes of the region, you must be sure how to develop relationships in a region. So relationships can be developed in two fashions. Relationship can be either discordant or accordant. When I say discordant, that means the two regions are totally exclusive or totally different. There is nothing that relates these two regions. When I say accordant, there is kind of relationship that exists between the two regions. Now this relationship can again be of two types. It can be coincident and correspondent. When I say coincident, that means the region will have same area as well as the region will have the same boundary. So that is coincident. That means uh, supposedly I have two pins here and one is totally lying onto the other. That means it is coincident or you can have the boundaries that match. So these two boundaries of this region match with these two boundaries of this region. So they have the same area and the same boundary. So they are coincident in nature. The next is correspondent. Correspondent again includes two types. One is in C2 and one is ex C2. When I say in C2, they have approximately the same area. More or less, I can say the expansion of this region is confined to uh, this particular area. But when I say XC2, they have different areas with same outlines or same boundaries, I could say. 
So here you have again a brief recap discordant and accordant. Discordant means they are totally disjoint or uh, they are exclusive and different. Accordant means there is a kind of relationship. Accordant can be coincident and correspondent. When I say coincident, that means they have the same area, exactly the same area and exactly the same boundaries. But when I say correspondent, it can be either in C2 or XC2. When I say in C2, it means they have approximately more or less the same area. But when I say they, that is XC2, that means they have different areas, but they have nearly the same outlines or the same boundaries. So this is about uh, the various attributes of region that are included or that are important to understand the concept of regional analysis and aerial differentiation and the various relationships within the regions that exist. Uh, this is a kind of very uh, brief summary of what we, we cover in regional geography. We would be covering these and more details when we will be talking about exclusively about regional geography. You can subscribe to Exam Race channel for any further updates. Stay tuned. Have a good day ahead.